Hi, this is Kim with Mom's Creative Moments, and I'm bringing you another project recipe today. This one is for Painted Garden, which is the spring collection that came out um, about six weeks ago. And um, we're going to make some changes to it, just some very subtle changes to it. I think you'll find that it's um, really cute. I hope it turns out cute. I haven't actually made it yet. So let's check out my workspace. All right, so this is our project recipe for Painted Garden. Um, and these are four of four papers from that same collection and a piece of white cardstock that I have out here on the table. Um, the, these are the elements that are called for to do this project recipe. I am going to introduce a couple of other elements um, when we get that far, but um, and then you can choose whether you want to do them or not, but I just want, thought that they might be kind of um, cute and interesting and help us use up a little bit of our scraps. So um, I'm using also, this is called the Floral Peaks Decorative Punch. This came out with the Painted Garden uh, collection and it is really nice. It has this giant kind of leaf that separates the flowers which I think is pretty cool and we're going to do some things to um, accent that um, a little bit later. I'm also using the largest oval in the oval selections in our custom cutting system and the green blade and I have repositionable and permanent adhesive and we should be able to do the majority of this layout with that and um, along with some stickers, some border stickers, and some, uh, some embellishments. But we will get to those towards the end. So let me scoot these things out of the way and grab my trimmer, and um, we will get started trimming. Because as you know, that's the first thing we need to do. So I'm using this kind of pink ombre-ish uh, piece from the Tone on Tone collection uh, as one of the bases and the other base is this one that has this kind of the sun um, sparkles and is still kind of an ombre color um, scheme. These are going to be our two base sheets which we are going to be punching and trimming as well um, but I am going to set them aside just for the moment so we can just concentrate on these three pieces first. So the white cardstock is the one we're going to do first. I'm just going to set these a little bit out of the way and grab my trimmer. We need two pieces of white cardstock that are 3 by 12. So we're going to just go ahead and um, put our cardstock on that 3 inch grid line and just go ahead and cut that straight. So we need two of those. Spring may finally be here, I have to say. I'm excited. Um, this is the Friday before airing uh, this particular video that I'm recording this, and, um, and I am excited. It's, we've had sunshine all day, and a um, little bit warmer temperatures, which is good. My husband went skiing yesterday and came home and said that some of the avalanche warning areas had 50 foot drifts that they were watching and waiting to fall, have them fall, which, which is crazy. All right, so then I'm cutting, I just turned my paper horizontally and I'm cutting six by four inch mats. You saw me trim off just an itty bitty tiny bit. Um, sometimes when we when we trim with our 12 inch trimmer, depending on whether we put our paper right on top of the line, if the edge of our paper is right on top of the line or maybe slightly over or maybe slightly under, sometimes our measurements can be off just a little tiny bit. So it's up to you whether you want to um, adjust that or not, or just go ahead and cut your four by six mats um, with that little tiny bit extra. That's totally fine. Okay, I set this third 
four by six piece off to the side here because we're going to be doing a little bit more cutting on that. Then I'm going to grab this piece of decorative paper, which is, I don't know, I call it the multi-leaf, um, multi-colored leaf page. I have no idea what it's really supposed to be called. It's a beautiful piece of uh, designer paper in that all the colors are so beautifully woven together. Really, really, really pretty. Um, so we're going to use this and we're going to, um, the, this paper is going to be directional because you see how the leaves are going this direction and these pieces are going to be cut or, or turned horizontally across our um, layout. So I'm going to turn my paper so that I'm cutting it horizontally. So I'm going to cut two more three inch pieces. However, these are three by ten inch pieces. So I'm going to start my cut here about ten inches and go down. Then I'm going to move my sheet along and and put my paper again at three inches. And then come down here and start again at 10 inches. I do that by putting the very edge of the housing at the 11 inch mark on my metal arm right here. And then I know my blade is starting at 10 inches. Okay. And then what I can do is turn it this way and I can cut two inches off and these will both be 10 inches long. Okay, I'm going to move it down here so that the edge of my housing is at 7. That will put my cut starting at 6 inches, which is where this line is. And then I should have this one and this one. Perfect. All right. Now what I need is to go ahead and have this last bit be a four and a quarter piece. So four, four and a quarter is going to be right here. And actually, you know what, let's turn it around and we'll cut four and a quarter from this edge over here, which is not how it's laid out, but that's okay. Uh, that will keep my my uh, paper in one piece and who knows I might need it to be in one piece so four and a quarter putting that at four and a quarter and then going to turn this and cut it at six inches notice my little plastic flap out here that tells me where six inches is or you can move your arm out on your trimmer and it will tell you where six inches is. All right, so these are going to be mats as well. We're gonna set those up there. Then I'm gonna grab this green sort of basket weave tone on tone paper. It's got yellow diamonds on the back, yellow with darker yellow diamonds. And we are going to just cut four mats out of this as well. We're going to cut at four and a quarter, just like we did the last one. So four and a quarter, then we're going to turn it and cut it at six. All right, there's a couple. Then we're going to cut at six and a quarter. So six and a quarter, I'm going to need my arm out for to be accurate. So six and a quarter is there. And I can either cut all the way down to the bottom and then have two pieces, or I can cut to eight and a half. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to come down here and put the edge of my trimmer or edge of my housing at nine and a half and cut straight up. And then I'm going to turn it. Yeah. And I'm going to come over here and let me see, doing the math. That is, 
this piece is one and a half inches. And the two of them together are again eight and a half. So we need, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. We're going six and a quarter this way. And we are doing that at the eight and a half inch mark, eight and a half inches from <clears throat> 12 leaves us with one, two, three and a half inches left. So I've got my paper at the three and a half inch mark here, which is right. I'm going to start at the six and a half inch mark here. And that's going to give me one big sheet of green. Then I'm going to move this in just to the four and a quarter mark. I think I'm making this just more difficult than it needs to be this time around. Sorry about that, guys. So we've got six and a quarter by four and a quarter mats, two of them. Six and a quarter by four and a quarter. We've got two that are four and a quarter by six that are also green. Then we've got two that are in that floral pattern paper that are also six by four and a quarter. And we've got two that are white that are six by four. All right, so those are, are the mats and we're gonna set those aside. Now, don't put your trimmer too far away. Grab these two pieces right here and we're going to grab our, uh, excuse me, our base sheets. Okay, so one thing I was going to look at and I didn't do it, so let me just look at it very quickly. Okay, so that's done slightly different. Okay. Okay, so these two pieces need the end punched. So we're going to grab our, and, we, and we're not punching these two pieces, so just set those aside. We'll get to them in a minute. But the short end of, of our 10 inch by three inch pieces needs to be punched, okay? And we need to punch it um, all the way across. Okay, hmm. I'm, I think, I think the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to go ahead and center it. So I'm, I'm centering it between the two marks that are here in the front. Just do the best you can because you can line it up. You'll be able to line it up later, trust me. It'll be fine. Okay, then we're going to just scoot it to the side here. We're going to match our pattern and punch and do the same thing over here. We're going to match our pattern. Sure we are. This one's kind of tricky. There we go. All right, match our pattern and punch. So we have a decorative edge only on one of the short ends of our leaves. Now, because these are directional, you want to make sure your leaves are going vertical. And then I've got the left hand side done. So now my leaves, I've got my leaves vertical. I need to do this side right here. So that it's the outer edge of both papers. If it was not a directional paper, then it wouldn't matter so much. But since it is a directional paper, we have to be a little more careful with that. Such a pretty punch. Really, really nice. All right, so those are ready. Let me go ahead and get rid of this confetti here real quick. All right, now we're gonna take each of our base sheets 
and we're going to punch along an outside edge. So I'm going to start with the, with the mark on the front of my punch, push my paper all the way to the shoulder in the back. I'm going to utilize the notch that's back here to help me line up my, my design. When you have a repetitive design like this one, it can be really hard to know when you've gone, when you have fed your paper through far enough. So CM has started putting these cute little notches on the part that's being going to get, just get tossed away. And, um, and that way it helps us not go crazy trying to punch these cute designs which I appreciate, and I know I'm not alone. Okay, so we're gonna toss that little bit, and I'm gonna snip this part off just by breaking it with my fingernail. You could use scissors if you would rather, but it's probably not a critical thing. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to punch one side of the pink ombre paper the same way All right, now, and let me just get rid of my, my confetti so that I have a clean workspace. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna grab our trimmer real quick and we're going to trim off this edge and then we're going to punch it again. So this edge is going to be trimmed at one and a quarter. And let me just make sure I'm doing that right so I don't goof it up. Yep, one and a quarter inch. We're gonna trim that off. Okay, so we've got one and we've got another one. At one and a quarter inch. There we go. Okay, now we're going to punch another edge along these. And we are done with the trimmer now, so you can go ahead and set that more, more to the side than it was before. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and punch along this other long side. It doesn't matter which side you want to do it on. You can punch it on whichever side makes you happy. And mine is not all the way to the back, so I might... Design's not lining up. Okay. I went over to a friend's house yesterday. You really know that spring is coming or that temperatures have gotten warmer when you start hearing the water running. I got to her front door and I could hear, it sounded like a waterfall at her front door, and it was all just coming from her roof. It's <laughs> kind, of, kind of an exciting moment to, when spring finally feels like it's here. Of course, it's almost Easter, and by the time you get this, it will be just after Easter. So, with any luck, the weather will hold and we will continue having some wonderful sunshiny days and we can plant our gardens and life is good. A 
another friend of mine posted a video on Facebook of the buffalo out on Antelope Island, which is right here in the middle of the Great Salt Lake, having babies, which is definitely a sign of spring, although the temperatures have not felt like spring. So it's kind of crazy. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to take our white pieces of cardstock and with our white pieces of cardstock, we're gonna build this side of our page. All right, so we're going to go ahead and add here. I'm gonna move this punch out of the way for right now. We're gonna adhere each one of these with the, with the straight flat edge along one straight flat edge, just like that. Oh, actually, before we do that, I take that back. Okay, we're gonna embellish this just a little bit and I just thought it would be really fun to try this. So I'm gonna use my green, my green paper that I have left over. If you have this punch from the mini trio set, um, it's like a flower petal kind of, but it comes to this really nice point and it actually is perfect for filling in this leaf space. So um, we would need 24 of these punched to have enough to fill in all of our leaf spaces. But let me show you so you can get an idea. If we put this underneath here, we can fill in that leaf space for the flower. It's just perfect. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just punch out 24 of these. We need 12 for each side. Okay, so as you can see, I used that strip that was on the side of my green paper, and by being careful and turning my punch over so I can see it, and making sure that I was getting them as close as possible, I got 24, which is exactly how many we need, out of that strip. So let's go ahead and adhere these to our uh, punched borders. So I'm going to use my repositionable adhesive. I'm going to place it just across the leaf area. Okay, then I'm going to take each one of these yellow side up so that we can see the green and I'm going to place it over the openings on the wrong side of the paper. Okay, Now, of course, you do not have to do this step if you would rather not do this step. By all means, fast forward the video so that you can get to the assembly portion, the regular assembly portion for this project recipe. This is just something that I thought would be cute and um, kind of a cool twist. And so um, if you want to try it, be my guest. I, you, you know that I'm not, you know, one for a whole lot of paper art, but this is something I can handle for sure. So just kind of fun, kind of a fun thing to try. Now the ones on the ends, we're going to, we're going to use one piece for both ends. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the 12th piece 
and I'm going to go ahead and glue it or you know adhere it there and then I'm going to grab my precision point scissors and just go ahead and trim it just like that and then jump over here to this side and go ahead and put this guy on this side. All right, so now you can see a little bit easier when I'm not on my green mat, right? You can see that we have, oh, I've got several leaves. Um, we have leaves. Now we can do the same thing with the flowers, but boy, I had to really search to find a punch that would work to fill in the flowers. I finally was able to deduce that if you have the pumpkins border maker cartridge, that the large pumpkin in the border maker is actually a good size for filling in this flower. I don't have another punch that will that it is a size that will work for that. So if you have a punch that you think works better, would you go ahead and put it in the comments for everybody? I think that would be awesome if you don't mind. Okay, so this is eggplant. And I'm going to play around with this for just a minute and see, see if I can make this work. I'm just doing a rough punch because I really don't need I don't need a bunch of purple pumpkins. I just want that larger circle shape of this large pumpkin. So, let's see. If I put some repositionable adhesive across that flower right there, then I can take this pumpkin and lay it over the top and then we get a really nice purple flower which is complementary to the other colors that we've got going on here. Or you could pull out this this red right here if you have a cardstock or a, or a um, printed designer paper scrap that will work to match that that would be that would also look really nice okay so I'm just going to go ahead and um, cut out these I wonder if this medium one would work would that work ooh actually no not quite So we do need the bigger one. I think this one is too small. So that's a lot of paper to punch just for one pumpkin, but depends on the effect you want I suppose and they don't have to be perfect pumpkins they can be you know slightly goofed up because you punched them too close together or you know something but I think and the, the slightly smaller ones might work they're almost big enough just not quite like you might have a little bit of a gap. So it depends on if you're okay with a little bit of a gap or not. Okay, so I will do those in just a second. Let's find another color that we can use for the pink, the, the reddish pink side. And I'm thinking actually that we probably could use
Okay, sorry, I had to reset just a little bit and I'm not really sure where, but for some reason the memory card I was using ran out of space. And so I don't know exactly where it cut off because I haven't been able to check it. But I went ahead and um, as you can see, I have the purple under the flowers here and the yellow under the flowers here along with the green leaves. I have adhered our flower strip to, uh, w to the long side of each of our 3 by 12 white cardstock pieces. Now we're going to adhere the remainder of our yellow and pink red um, sheets to our to these strips. So first I'm going to start with the pink one. So I'm going to set our pink flowers and our yellow paper to the side and we're going to use this we're going to use our repositionable adhesive because we're going to be adhering this piece right here with all the holes in it. Okay, so just go ahead and put repositional adhesive all the way down that and a little bit more, a little ways in. We need to make a 12 by 12 piece, a full 12 by 12 piece. So. Um, because we have two different pieces here and we're measuring or we're putting essentially we are reassembling a 12 inch piece of paper I'm gonna place my strip on my mat where I know there is a 12 inch mark okay and it's straight then I'm gonna place the other end of my large larger piece I've got mine set at 12 and 24 that's 12 inches then I'm just going to lay that down on top of the white piece and I know I now have a 12 by 12 piece of paper. Okay, so there's one and because I added that additional adhesive, now it's stuck to my table. <laughs> so to maybe don't do that, don't do that extra row of adhesive. We'll use it eventually but we don't need it right just now. Okay, going to set that over there. We're going to do the same thing for this piece. Okay, so I'm going to place this on the line at 12 inches and make sure that it's nice and straight. Then I'm going to place this here at 24 inches, making sure it's nice and straight. And then it's just going to lay right down on top of the white cardstock to create my new 12 by 12. Okay. Now, on our layout instructions, it shows the this border being vertical this way, but I want to turn mine and make it go this way for a couple of reasons. One is because I feel like my flowers are then growing in the right direction. And the other is because I want to add the sticker. Rather than adding these leaf stickers, I want to add the one with the little hummingbirds. Okay, and so I don't want them to be flying sideways. So I'm going to turn my layouts so that they are both going this direction instead of, instead of this direction. Now you can choose to do that or not choose to do that. That's completely up to you. But that is what I'm going to do just so you know. That's my additional change that I am making to the way I'm assembling this. Okay. so. One thing we need to do though before we get that far is we need to adhere these strips. And I know that before I had said we needed to be mindful of the directionality of them so that our leaves were traveling in the right direction. However, I um, what I should have had you do, I did a couple of things that I probably should not have had you do. I should have had you punch the edge first and then measure your 10 inches because this is supposed to be a little bit closer and more of a shadow like so and I should have left the paper turned the direction it was at the beginning so that when I turned it um, in this instance 
my leaves are were going vertically. So just a couple things to keep in mind if you're going to follow my lead and try and do what I'm doing here. You might want to cut that differently and I, I will add a note when I edit the video. So I think when I adhere this down I'm going to leave a gap up here at the top just so that I can make this look correct over here and I can probably cover that with a mat or something. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and adhere this down and basically what we're doing is we are uh, that, that extra adhesive I added to the back of this is going to just drive me crazy. Okay, I'm, I am just adhering this where the patterns match and it's roughly an inch and a half from the edge, from the outside edge of my, um, of my page. But I'm, and then I'm adhering it just, just over where the petals, petal punched areas begin. All right, and so then um, if you just make sure that it's straight and mine was not, that's why I'm mentioning it. goodness. I know this video has been quite long so I'm trying to do this quickly and of course my adhesive is not cooperating. Okay, that should be better. Okay, like that. This one. Stop sticking to my table. I should just rub that adhesive off of there. Just so it doesn't keep bugging me. All right. I'll put this one on here like so. Okay, now, in an effort to be able to go ahead and um, get my mats on correctly just so that it so that I can kind of go by the picture I am going to let's see the larger mats are going to go oh they, they actually have this I think one more up but that's okay it'll be all right do like this and that's just centered well is it centered actually uh, there's a little bit more of a gap in the center so we'll see if we leave it that way um, and then this one goes here and this one goes here and The white one goes in the center of the bigger green one, and these leaves go next to these. All right, so that is initially how those layouts go. Now, I can turn this because remember, remember I said I was going to turn my layout and make it go a funny little fly go big fly okay um, we can do it this way where we have our two on the outside our two larger ones on the outside and our complementary piece in the center or we can do it the other way Again, this is the one that has extra adhesive on the back, so it's kind of a little bit different. And we could do like so. And I kind of like that better, I think. So we would do like that. And then 
we're going to I'm going to grab these cute stickers of the hummingbirds come on come off there there we go and these guys are going to go right across the white portion in between the sets of flowers on that border area so just like that Now we can use more of the embellishments of the hummingbirds on our on our page. So let's see, we've got the cute, cute stickers that come with this collection. I love the flowers and the ladybugs and the berries are so cute. Um, let's see. Oh, one thing I did forget to do was to cut an oval. So according to our instructions, we are supposed to cut an oval from the green one and from the um, Actually, it looks like they cut that oval from underneath where a photo would go, where that mat goes. So they cut an oval out from underneath in order to create this journal box right here. So we could do that. Whoa. What we would do is go ahead and actually, I think what I would do before I did that is I would use this larger mat and go ahead and cut an oval from here. So I'm going to grab my, oh, my, um, <laughs> I'm going to grab this and I'm going to cut. I'm going to use my red blade to cut a piece from the center of this mat. So, red blade on the center track on the larger mat, the largest green mat that we cut before. Okay because we're just going to go ahead and cover that with this white piece so no one will even know that it's missing I'll go back right there and then we're going to use the green blade to cut an oval from that piece of that 4 by 6 piece of white cardstock that we had left over up there we're going to go ahead and cut this piece and then this will be our journal box that's a clever a clever notion huh clever idea and then you get a little more mileage from your decorative paper a nice matching frame all right so let's get these adhered
right, so then we have these really cute, cute, cute birds that we can do. Maybe do one on a branch, the other one flying. There's another on a branch, which we could do. Do another one flying up this way, maybe. Or we could put just put some flowers down here. We could put them kind of we could put them kind of in the middle of our page. So cut them in half and then they would both be right in the middle. I think I kind of like that. Or we could just use this one and cut it in half. Instead of doing those, we could just use that one. We'll cut it in half and put it right in the middle of both of the pages. I kind of like that. All right, let me grab my foam squares. Get these guys popped up. And glued down. Let's go ahead and split this guy in half. Okay, I think I'm just going to put another one right there just for good measure. Yeah, I don't think we need another one on that one. Okay, so then these will go just right here in the middle, right on the edge of center right on the edge of the center edge of the jeeping okay what do you think I like it I think I think I'm ready for spring how about you I hope that you had a beautiful Easter yesterday and that your week will continue to be beautiful and renewing. And I hope this layout has helped give you some ideas for different ways that you can use the project recipes to make them your own. Thank you so much for joining me and I wish you again a happy Easter and many more creative moments. You have a great day.